Hello, beautiful one. When you look at this equation, it looks so complicated, right? But don't worry. I'm going to teach you how to solve it in seconds without expanding. Now, let's take it that you want to expand this. What do you do? You just need to expand in twos, okay? You do this. You have x plus 3. Expand it with x plus 5. And whatever results you get, you bring down the third one, okay? When you are done, you bring down the fourth one. And when you are done expanding, you are going to have equation that has the highest power of x to be 4. And you know, such equation is a degree 4 polynomial equation, which is your quartic equation. And solving such can be so complicated, okay? So to solve such, this kind of equation without expanding, let me show you the easiest way to go about it. To do this, we're going to begin with solution. So when you look at this, you observe that these numbers here, this is 3, this is 5, this is 7, this is 9. It is increasing by a constant number 2. So what you do when you identify such equation of this form, what you just need to do is, let's repeat what we have. We have x plus 3 into x plus 5 into x plus 7 into x plus 9 is equal to 9. So what we do first is to take the average of this constant, okay? So to do that, we are going to have, so the average, remember, average is to add them and divide by how many they are. So it's going to be 3, add 5, add 7, add 9, divide it by, since there are 4, we divide by 4. So if you add this, it will give you 10, 19. So we have 24 divided by 4, and that will give us 6. So in that case, we can still say, let, okay, to replace this x to re reduce us of some stress, we can say let x be equal to, introduce another variable, we can say x will be equal to y. And since these are both adding, you see all of them are adding, you will not take the opposite sign. So let x be equal to y minus this average we got here. Did you see? So we're going to use this value of x to reduce the work for us. So substituting this x value in this bracket, see what we are going to have. So for x, we are going to have y minus 6, then add 3. That's the first bracket, okay? For the second bracket, replace your y. Your x will be y minus 6, then add 5, into, for this you have y minus 6, add 7, okay? And this you also have y minus 6, add 9. Everything is equal to 9. Interesting. Simplifying this, we now have y, this add this will give us negative 3, okay? Into, this and this will give us negative 1, so we have y minus 1. And negative 6 at 7 gives us 1. So we have y plus 1 into this will give us positive 3. So we have y plus 3. Everything is equal to 9. So what did you observe? You also observe that these two can be brought together and these two also together. So if you do that, we have y minus 3. Then bring this, we have y plus 3 into then we have y minus 1 y plus 1, everything is equal to 9. Interesting. What did you observe? You see that each time you have a squared minus b squared, it is always a plus b into a minus b. And this can also be written to be a minus b into a plus b. So whichever way you express it, they are the same. So if this is true, this is your difference of two squares, we can apply this here, okay? Knowing fully well that these are of these forms. Did you see? So from here, we are going to have, this is going to be A and this is B. So using this formula here, we have Y squared minus 3 squared. For these two, it is giving us this. Did you see that? Okay, let's put it in bracket. Then for these two, it will give us Y squared minus 1 squared. And everything is equal to 9. Interesting. At this point, what should you do next? If you simplify this, it gives you y squared minus 3 squared is 3 times 3 to give us 9. 
and y squared minus 1 squared is 1 times 1 to give us 1 is equal to 9. So to keep reducing this, see what we do. And don't forget to like this video. Let us know what you feel about it in the comment. Share this. And if you are still new, subscribe for we have a lot to offer to you. Let's continue. And to do that, we have... So to reduce this also, like we did earlier, we are going to still take the average of these two, okay? So we are going to have the average, okay, will be... Just take the numbers. We have 9 and 1, okay? Then divide it by, since there are 2, you divide by 2. If you add this, it gives you 10 divided by 2, gives you 5. So the 5 is average. So at this point, to reduce this, we say let your y squared, okay? Let y squared introduce another variable now. So we can say let it be m, okay? And because this is subtraction, you take the opposite. So let y squared be m plus this average. So this is going to help us to reduce this. And to substitute it here, we are going to have, instead of writing y squared, I'm going to write m plus 5, okay? So we we'll have m add 5, then minus 9. Interesting. Then for the second one, we have m add 5 minus 1. Everything is equal to 9. So if you simplify this, you have m subtract this, it gives you negative 4. Okay, then m, if you add this, will give us positive 4 and is equal to 9. So what did you observe? This is now also of this form and you can apply this difference of two squares. So if you do that, this is the same as m squared, okay, minus 4 squared using your difference of two squares and everything should be equal to 9. So keep solving this. We have m squared, 4 squared is 4 times 4 to give us 16, okay, is equal to 9. So solving this, just add 16 to both sides and it will give us m squared is, if you add this, is 0. So add this, it will give us 25. So it means that, remember, to remove square, you square root. And in square rooting it, you are going to take both the positive and negative value, okay, of this 25. So in that case, we have m will give us plus or minus square root of 25 we give us 5. So these are the two values of m. But remember, we are finding x. And we made a statement earlier that our y squared is equal to m plus 5. So let's recall that so that we can find y squared and then go back to x. So in that case, we can have, so recall that y squared is equal to m plus 5. So when m is 5, when m is positive 5, put it here, we are going to have y squared is equal to 5 add 5, okay? So in that case, we have y squared is 5 add 5 is 10. So to get y, you also take the square root, both the positive and negative. So it's going to be plus or minus root 10, okay? So that is the y value for when m is 10. So let's also get the y value from when m is negative 5. And to do that, this is what we have. So when m is negative 5, so we are going to have y squared will be equal to, remember our m will now be negative 5 plus 5. So we are going to have y squared is, if you add this, it gives you 0. So it's going to give us y will be plus or minus square root of 0. And you know, square root of 0 is always 0. So y will be, and 0 is neither, is a neutral number, okay? So we can just say y is equal to 0. But remember that you are supposed to have two values of y because it has an effect in getting the solutions for x. So this the second or the third value of y. And this one is the first and the second value. So let's use these two values of y to get the values of x. So to have. So we also recalled we said 
let our x be equal to y minus 6. We made this statement earlier. So this will help us to find the values of x. So remember the, this value of y, okay? So we have when y is root of 10, the positive value, we are going to have the first value of x will be y minus, our y is this, so we're going to have root of 10 minus 6. So this is the same as saying, negative 6 add root of 10. Remember, this is positive. So just to rearrange it. So this gives us the first value of x. Now, to get the second value of x, we also have it that the, our y will be negative of root 10. Okay, we are taking the second value of y as negative of root 10. Then we have minus 6. So if you rewrite that, you have Second value of x would be negative 6 minus root 10. So this gives us the second value of x. So we now get the third value of x. So we're going to have the third value of x. Remember we said y is 0 also. So if you plug it here, you have 0 minus 6. And that will give us the third value of x is going to give us negative 6. But you have to remember we are supposed to have two values here because we have positive and negative. But because it's zero, zero is a neutral number. So in that case, we are having this as negative six. So this negative six as the value of x is twice a repeated value, okay? is repeated. So you see, as we said earlier, this is supposed to give us a quartic equation. And for every quartic equation, you are expected to have four values of x. And these are the first, the second, and this one is repeated. And you see the easiest way to solve such equation. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like this video, share it. I'll see you in our next class. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>